Welcome back, Ronan here. Okay, so this is gonna be my first lore video for the Divinity Original Sin, not even Divinity Original Sin, Divinity series. There are seven games in the series, and as far as we can tell, they're all in the same world. I've been really curious about the lore myself, and some people in Discord have been asking questions, and uh, I'd like to be able to answer them. Now, there's a few problems. I think Larian, when they started back in the late 90s, uh, they did a project before, Divinity games. I don't know if the Knight, Maiden, and Wizard, or whatever it was called. Let's see what it was called. So they were working on a cancelled project named The Lady, The Mage, and The Knight. Uh, I was inspired by Diablo. And when they were working on this project... Uh, oh, okay. So this is funny. So back then, um, according to Sven, uh, the publisher rushed Divine Divinity's development and released the game unexpectedly. At the time, uh, Sven was still on tour promoting the game, didn't know the game was released, even though it still needed to have work done on it. So that would explain a lot of why we have some missing pieces in the story and the lore and things don't seem to connect. So we can't really fault the websites. I've been researching a lot of it. I'm gonna try to follow the fandom, so divinityfandom.com or most of the information, since I've noticed that most of it is more correct than other websites. Uh, so we're we'll re referencing this more than any other sites. Uh, I'll still be reading back and forth, but a lot of them have weird wording and with their wording causes issues, um, just from like a, a few words being used wrong. My goal is to shed some light on uh, these events and hopefully we get a good uh, understanding of it. Now, if I'm wrong with anything, just post it in the comments below. Uh, I can maybe investigate why. If you have a reference, that would greatly help. Because some people say, well, it's in the game. It's like, oh, where in the game? Anyway, let's start. So I figured I would start with the timeline. I was trying to figure out where do we start first? Because there's a lot to dig into this. It's going to be multiple parts. I'm probably going to try to keep them as short as possible. But mainly episodic, so I just can concentrate on smaller portions of the lore. I'll go with whatever details I've found, and I won't add in any of my opinions until near the end of the video, so we can have a discussion about where it may go in the future or what might have happened, but until Larian releases either more games or more information on these things, there's a lot of gray areas that are left for interpretation, I guess. Well, let's start. At first glance, some people may get confused with AR, AD. It's the same as for us, uh, BC, AD, After Death, and Before Christ. I don't know, I've heard the names being uh, interchangeable with other things. On this wiki, it mentions Anno Rivalanus, it's the ancient way of identifying specific years, and AD Anno Diorum, uh, how the current years now in honor of the seven gods. But that is, I think, a bit of BS. Because it didn't start when the seven gods came to be. We'll talk more about this later. Because I have some issues with that. So we have some undated events. We're going to start with that. Uh, we don't know when this happened. The earliest re recorded event would be when the eight Eternals, Chaos, Ralic, Tirsandelius, Duna, Zorostissa, Vrogger, Zentessa, and Amadia sought to acquire the power of Source. Utilizing the knowledge of Fane, they overthrew the God King and sealed the majority of their kind beyond the Void. There's a few issues with this. As far as I can tell, this is what would have created the Seven. The Seven were Eternals. With this event, that would have left Chaos and the God King beyond the Void. After that event, we had the Wizarding Wars. It took place throughout Rivalon. Berlin is sealed away in the plain of Hypnerotomachia, below Alaroth as a result. We'll talk about the Wizarding Wars in more details uh, at a later time. Still under the undated events in AR, I know Rivalanus, Belagar and his youth summoned four demons and was then able to control them. Maxos answered his plea for assistance and sealed Belagar in a primordial cave until such a time that a brave adventurer would set him free. The first recorded instance of Tainted Source occurs, following a darkness sweeping the land. Those who could wield its power no longer able to heal, now find themselves as destroyers. As a result of this change, the Order of the Source Hunters is established to contain the threat 
from sorcerers. I believe this is the, the start with Astarte. I think she may have been the cause of this one. Uh, Bracchus Rex used source to rule his land with an iron fist and saw others, his sister included, as nothing but pawns in his plan. Ruling from Fort Joy on Reaper's Eye, the tyrant developed tools for containing and purging source from others, enabling his position as the monarch of these lands to go unchallenged by any who oppose him. Enabling his position as the monarch of these lands to go unchallenged by those who may oppose him. His time of tyranny was eventually brought to an end by the order of source hunters. Defeated by them, he was taken to the mainland to face trial, hung and thrown into a well below Sicile. His corpse was retrieved by his disciples and buried in the Church of the Seven. So this is where I have a hard time with the because undated events. Before we move on, let's talk about them a little bit. At the beginning, it says AD. Well, AD should start now because that's when essentially the seven in honor of the seven gods so somewhere in there they decided that okay we're going to change the, the dating system and it's based on the seven gods but they were already a thing when Bracchus rex died but we don't have any dates to that so this could be anywhere in the timeline it's the very first game in the timeline now the games that uh, larian have put out were not released in order so Dragon Commander is actually the first in the Divinity series, and it takes place 8,800 years AR. So 8,800 years before Divinity Original Sin. Now I've only played Dragon Commander for a short while. I can't really speak too much to the game itself. Rivalon's first emperor, Sigurd, is murdered by three of his own children, and a war for the throne begins. Now it's just funny because Sigurd is still spoken about like 10,000 years later pretty much which is kind of weird. Each of them unknowingly manipulated by the demon Corvus, who although bound within the airship the Raven by the wizard Maxos, can still enter their thoughts. Maxos, in his desire to ensure the legacy of Sigurd is sustained, seeks out the Emperor's love child with the dragon Aurora. So basically, in Dragon Commander, you end up playing as the love child of Sigurd, and you are a dragon knight essentially, and you take over Rivalon. Although his armies were also influenced by Corvus through the dreams of the Commander Imp's mechanic Grumio, he prevailed against the half siblings and you reunited the land. So, what ends up happening is there's a power struggle when Sigurd dies, and you, as the player, uh, are the, I guess, better. A lot of politics in that game that I don't think we've seen in any other Divinity games. I think it plays into the characters in the Divinity world are not necessarily good or evil. I'll touch up more on that in my original sin. Like, what is the original sin? I'll talk about more about morality and ethics, I guess, in the Divinity world. And that may shed some light on some of these events. That's about all they have listed that happens in 8800 AR. Now, from a little bit that I played, they seem to be a bit about LGBTQ stuff and um, SJW kind of vibe to the game. So nothing's mentioned here, which is odd because it's not really a theme that is represented in any of the other games in Divinity as, as of yet. Then we move... 8,800 years forward, which is a huge jump. Tons could be happening. There's a lot of undocumented events that could be happening in that timeline, which is nice in a way because we could be exploring that in future games, but bad in a way because we have no idea of what happened. So in 4 AR, two source hunters, Scarlet and Roderick. Now the weird thing here is any other time you play the game, any other divinity game they do not name the player so whatever your character you make in any of the divinity games they do not name it except for original sin at least for the first time and same goes with if you pick a pre-made character in original sin 2 because even in divine divinity they never named who the character was until later i don't think they knew what the character was initially or that there was a specific character. So two source hunters, Scarlet and Roderick, are sent to Sicile to investigate the murder of a local counselor, 
Jake. As part of their investigations, they discover a star stone, discovering a much greater threat on the horizon, the void dragon consuming all of time. The two hunters' initial task is intertwined with their destiny. For Jake's death was part of a wider plan by the Immaculates to assist the dragon in its personal mission. Furthermore, as the hunters obtain the star stones and their tainted form of bloodstone, their true identity as and history as the guardians of the god box and their deviation from duties resulting in the dragon's release and corruption of Astarte become apparent. So this is where the original sin in the first game would be that Astarte opening the god box. But at the same time, it is also the fault of your characters, Scarlet and Roderick, for having... I'm not sure if it's specifically mentioned, it's just like, I guess lust, maybe? Love? I don't know. But it doesn't mention that they left her alone for X amount of time. Could have been a glimpse, could have been like a thousand years, who knows. But they took their gaze away from their duty. Their duty was to watch the god box and to watch over Astarte. And they failed at that duty and she got tempted, opened up the god box and then releasing the void dragon. So in the game, your memory was wiped. You're no longer immortals. So you were essentially immortals as the commanders. Your memory was wiped and you got sent to go investigate Jake's murder. I don't really know if it makes sense. I don't know if it's mentioned anywhere, but who wipes their memory? Hopefully it's a star day. I'm replaying the game as I'm making this video. So maybe some of this could change my opinion because you're also the weaver of time and zigzags in that one. So even their smaller acts have had an effect on the events of time, surpassing their own lives on Rivalon. Belagar was sealed during the Wizarding Wars in the primordial cave by Maxos. He was released by the Source Hunters, and his freedom would affect events across the world for over 1300 years after Divinity Original Sin, because he shows up in Divinity 2 as a troll. As part of the Immaculate's plans, Brachus was resurrected for a brief time, only to be taken down again by the Source Hunters, by Scarlet and Roderick. The only thing I see with this is I think it's not really specifically mentioned because we don't see Immaculates anymore. Technically, we see an Immaculate in Divinity Sin 2. We see one, for sure. I think the Immaculates may be also Black Ring, but I can't confirm it. All right, so now we jump to 180. 100 years after Divinity, Original Sin, the Lord of Chaos exacted his first attempt to render the demon race a dominant species of Rivalon. His plans were thwarted by the dwarves, and he returned to hell. We'll talk about the races in another video. We jump to 611 AD. Chaos launched his second assault on Rivalon with backing of not only demons, but also legions of the damned. Wizards, of which many have been cast out due to their performance in dark magic and necromancy. They managed to force the armies of the League of the Seven, led by Reuben for All back in Rivertown, and after a drawn out skirmish in the semi abandoned town, drove the forces into Stormfist Castle. It was at this time that Reuben formulated a plan from a dream delivered prophecy to exile Chaos back to hell for good. By sacrificing the lives of the Council of Seven, Reuben himself Dylan for all, Gemthorn, Yulf, Tuhut, Grantha, Zax, and Godar. A divine act was performed. The Legion, now leaderless, fled the battlefield, and a small number of survivors fell into hiding. The Sword of Lies, carrying the Seed of Chaos life essence, carried into battle by the Dark Lord's general, Ulthring, was taken by Ralph, Squire to Reuben. So this has also not happened in the game. It may have happened in a novella or inside a lore book. Uh, there are two novellas in the series. Uh, I'm trying to track them down. I'm trying to either at least read the Cole's notes of it or read the whole thing, but uh, I, I just I have to find them. So basically, Chaos tried to come back and the Council of the Seven drove him back. So they sacrificed themselves and drove Chaos back. But that left behind the Sword of Lies. So between 611 and 1200 AD, this is somewhere in there, it doesn't specifically say the dates, but these uh, events happened. Ralph became the leader of the wizard race and found his time divided between carrying out the duties of his role as chief battle mage of Ray Alor, spokesperson of the wizards and battling the Sword of Lies. This is weird. As Ralph's strength to resist the sword dwindled, 
His servants, sensing something was direly wrong, petitioned Morek Ferol, Ralph's childhood friend, to visit him. Seeing the state of his friend and learning the urgency of the situation, Morik assisted his childhood friend in sealing the sword between the walls of Stormfist itself. However, before this could be completed, Chaos finally took control of Ralph and he too was sealed within the walls. Now I can just picture that in my head, having somebody just like stuck between two walls, but I'm pretty sure that's not how it was, unless you know, that'd be kind of weird. Why would you put somebody in between walls? It's not like they had drywall and you know, the walls were probably really thick, castles. Not sure. So he was sealed within Stormfist. So, the passing of the last surviving member of the Legion of the Damned, Zenfire Bletsporn, taking his own life at Broken Tooth Crag. At this time, the Black Ring descendants are in their infancy as a faction. Committing comparatively minor hate magics and storm gatherings, Zenfire passes on his knowledge of the Sword of Lies to the Ring through his death letter. Alright, so a lot of stuff happened, basically between the Nirojil Sin, and Divine Divinity. In 1218, this is where Divine Divinity starts. The Sword of Lies is retrieved by the young Duke Janus, 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 from the Vault of Stormfist. Manipulated by the Black Ring, seeking to revive Chaos, Janus proclaims to be the Divine One. Now, we never heard a Divine being mentioned before, so I don't know right now who it was. I don't think it's ever mentioned who the divine was the thing is in the game when the game starts it shows you a video of a woman in white almost like angel like about to get killed by the black ring and then she sends out three shards of i don't know power light into three individuals which they call the marked ones which apparently now it's been retconned that they are god woken i don't know where these this wording came from uh, i'm still looking for a source but as of right now we're going to keep with marked ones so we didn't know who that woman was i have some opinions on that later which is okay it's weird because this is the first time this timeline mentions zandalore but zandalore had a part to play in divinity original sin as well with his little love triangle with the kara and leandra so zandalore finds three marked ones those with the ability to become divine they are targeted by the Black Ring to prevent ascension. Wooter and Joris were the other two, and they're killed like so easily by the ring. It's just, it's not even funny. However, Lucian. In the base game, it never mentions that you are playing as Lucian. Hell, I play my first character as a woman archer. I don't think I was Lucian. So Lucian survives multiple attempts on his life. This is the first time we hear of Lucian. Now, it does help the lore moving forward, but this shows that Lucian is actually pretty important. And it's weird that we only hear of him at the very end of Divinity Original Sin 2. Finding the newly appointed council members, Lucian ascends to Divinity. However, the majority of the council is killed during the ritual by Janus with a team of orcs uh, in his stead. But the funny thing is, here's, here's the thing. From what I gather, this council, this newly appointed council, because in the game, that's what you do. You go save these council appointees. They don't really know what's going on. They speak the words. They teleport to the Council of Seven, which could be the Academy. I don't know if it's used at the same point in time, place, whatever. It's really important in this game. They give you half of their power for you to ascend to be the Divine. So that's really important because... The fact that they're giving you half of their power, half of their source, essentially, makes Lucian the Divine and really powerful. And now we'll have to touch on that later. So it says here, assisted by the Patriarch. There is a problem here because in the game, he's not addressed as the Patriarch and it's not really worded properly. So the Patriarch's a dragon. And you do see him in Divine Divinity. But he's not assisted by the Patriarch to travel to Uthal Gore. You end up in Uthal Gore in the game. Again, maybe there's retcons I just haven't found yet. So Lucian ends up waking up in Uthal Gore, which is the Orc territory. 
to eliminate the demon of lies. Now he seeks out help and he, you, know, you talk to him, but you trick the black dragon, the patriarch, into helping him to get the skills he needs to cross the swamp. Although able to remove the demon, its plans have reached fruition. A baby is now on an altar after he's killed the demon of lies. So the baby, I guess he's already been infused with chaos soul with him. Unable to kill the child. This is where I don't agree with this list because it says unable to kill the child. I should, I think the way I see it is more unwilling because he had his dagger out. He was going to kill the kid. Now, I'm not sure if it's because, you know, chaos had some control, you know, been able to just change him. Or it may be where I was talking about the, the ethics and the fact that characters are gray. And in the first game, as much as Lucian is being the good guy, saving... You know, he never asked to be the chosen one, but he's asked to, to, to destroy the Lord of Lies. And then he gets and then he's told what you're supposed to kill the baby. So he decides to not kill the baby and he walks away. And that's where the game ends. You leave the temple and he carries out the baby instead of stabbing him in the heart, whatever. He takes this the kid as his own and names him Damien. Which we've heard Damien in Divinity Original Sin 2, but we have no idea who he is if you haven't played the older games with the hope that the child can grow unaware of his potential and origin. So that is how Divin Divine Divinity ends. Now here, I, I find it a bit weird because we don't know the age of the baby, but it's a pretty young, like newborn-esque baby in Divine Divinity. And it says that the game started at 1218. How long did it take Lucian to do his mission? I don't know. So let's assume he started in January, <laughs> took him six months. He's still in 1218. So the next date on this wiki, it says it's 1219-1220. Damien's demonic abilities make their first appearance after placing his hand in a fire but becoming unscathed. Now, now, I don't think a one, two, even three year old would know what that means. So. You should take that with a grain of salt that he realizes. Yeah, they make their first appearance, but I don't think he realizes what's going on. I think maybe he thinks, oh, cool, I can't be burnt. But that's that's when some people can notice. Maybe Lucian notices. So then we jump about nine years. But we're now in 1228 to 1229 AD. Damien doesn't return home after taking his horse for a ride. So let's say he's about 10 years old. Lucian sets out in his search for him, eventually discovering the boy in Oakland Woods. Now, a really big map. I'm going to try to find one, but a nice map of Rivalon would be nice. I think I have one, but I'm not sure if it's just Divinity Original Sin 2, the map. And I'm not so sure we should be using the Dragon Commander map to be able to piece all this together. Because the world is pretty big. And a lot of people complain that, well, some of these events are happening. Well, why is no one... Here, why isn't Zandalore there or Arhu, whatever? And there's a lot of events. If you only base on the games, there's multiple ways to finish a quest and there's multiple endings and that could add a lot of confusion. But anyway, the map is pretty big. So even though Brachus Rex was a threat in the Fort Joy area, there's a lot of other areas that could have other threats as big as Brachus. So it could be a lot more stories and heroes and lore that's gonna expand hopefully with how busy Larian is. I get back to it. Uh, discovering the boy in Oakland Woods. Legs curled up in his chest in a state of shock. He's in the fetal position. Surrounded by three dead orcs, heads severed from torso and hearts burnt out. On coming to, Damien had no recollection of the events and on Lucian's return to the woods, no trace of the orcs were found. It sounds like Lucian found him, rushed him home, and then when he came back, there were no traces of, of that scene. Either somebody cleaned it up in Illusion, I'm not sure if there's no traces. I don't know what to read from that. It says here in 1230, Bwadrum Venomclaw relocates to the Broken Valley Village with an occult Abanayabar. I remember him in Divinity 2, but I don't really know what that changes. So here they set up into a village with an offcut. I'm guessing it's like maybe like Groot 
or the tree of life or a tree of life in this case because there's a lot of elder trees a lot of i guess the elves are from trees so apparently this abana yabar is a famous talking tree in the dark forest which we do go to the dark forest in divine divinity oh shit, we do see him i remember this quest but i didn't do it a few number so i remember this this tree so we do see him in divine divinity and he's convinced by a dwarf that all wood cutters imbue magic powers that can cut him down resulting in fear of mortals and aggression towards any who attempt to approach him he starts slinging fireballs and raising the undead to protect himself so prior to 1230 Quadrum Venom Claw took a branch from him and planted it in his basement in the Broken Valley Village, Watermill. You end up seeing this in Divinity 2, but by then it's 1300. We're not there yet. Well, that's cool. That does link the games together. In 1231, Lucian enrolls Damien into the Paladins on his 13th birthday. The Paladins themselves take to the enthusiastic young boy. Damien is allowed to move out of the cottage into the Paladins' quarters. So I'm guessing the cottage they mean is probably Lucian's. Whoever Lucian had him, so he was secluded from everyone. So he, they wouldn't know or wouldn't notice anything weird about him. And he wants to push Damien to become a paladin, or at least learn the way of the paladin so that he can be more good. Since gooder is not a word, be a better man. In this case, better half demon? I don't know. But two years later, in 1233, Damien excelled at his studies and can best any young paladin in combat. He was called upon by the villagers for his strong divination abilities. Lucian, satisfied that Damien was progressing well in his new role, embarked on a personal journey in part to enjoy flagons of ale and stew without being disturbed and in part hunt the Black Ring agent Kaelin. Kaelin was the father of Yagurna. Discovering his cottage and the malformed children containing within its walls, Lucian burnt the property down as an act of grace. There's probably too much inbreeding or something happening that the, the children were all malformed. Callan was discovered the next day by the paladins and thoroughly interrogated. Callan, in his refusal to answer the questions, bit off his tongue before being executed by Lucian. Lucian discovered a rift temple. So this is a different event. This We have to separate this different paragraph in this script lucian discovered a rift temple between the mountains of Tanaroth. after goliath threw a horseshoe the act itself seemingly normal was undertaken by the lizard god trogda this is where it's kind of weird because we've got established gods in this universe in a later video so exploring the temple lucian falls through a rift assisted by the gods landing on earth but i guess they took his coin purse which is apparently important in this timeline stuff, before he landed on Earth. Returning to Rivalon, Lucian arranged for the temple to be secured, hosting Paladins a distance from the perimeter, sensing the temple would have a great role of importance in the future. Somewhere in that same year after that, Damien meets and enters a relationship with Igerna. Lucian is initially receptive to the relationship, however later discovering that Igerna is a Black Ring operative. Damien arrives at her execution and soul forges himself to her and they subsequently escape. Now I'm not sure how that really works and I don't know if there's any proper information out there right now to explain that soul forge, but there's more to this in Divinity 2. So Damien becomes the leader of the ring and mounts an attack on Lucian at the Rift Temple. Lucian traps Damien in Nemesis and erases his memory, Damien's memory. Damien is taken in by the Renar, who attempt to return him to his world. After discovering he's blocked from passing through the rift, so it sounds like because Damien couldn't cross himself, the elders went through the rift portal to check in what's going on and getting the information from Lucian. Damien becoming aware of who he is so it's only now that he's realizing that he he's something else. He finds out from the High Elders, murders the High Elder, confronted by Anlokar. The battle ends with Damien fleeing. Anlokar replaces her father as the High Elder and enforces additional patrols to search for Damien. 
So after a prolonged search for Damien, the patrol started being bored at the heightened security. They lowered the patrol rate to about one a day. I'm not sure why that's important, but we'll see. Damien then steals the Holy Crystal of Protection from the temple via the imps on cleaning duty, lifting the seal between the demon plane and Nemesis. As the demons push the Ron back to the academy, Anlokar sends an imp with a message to find the demon commander to negotiate. Which I'm guessing that's Asmodeus. So Asmodeus breaks into Anlokar's chambers. Taking her to his lair, he confirms Damien's role in the theft. He offers Anlokar an opportunity to drive the demons back in exchange for enslavement. Anlokar accepts and the demons are driven back. However, the Renar were exterminated. Never make a deal with a demon. Jahan says it. Lucian discovers the reality of how the gods came to be and attempts to restore the status quo. I'm guessing this. This is when Dallas gets in touch with Lucian. This is where he finds out. Between 1233 and 1238, he finds out about the gods, the seven gods. Dealing with the Black Ring army approaching the Elven lands, two lizards from the House of War suggest deploying Death Fog. Ifen Ben Mez is tasked with evacuating the elves so they don't succumb from the Death Fog. However, Alexander rings the Rift Scroll to deploy Death Fog upon opening. The promise is Ifen he would personally oversee the release of the evacuation. So it's kind of weird, really written again. Ifen reaches the elves as the first Black Ring reach the forest. The elves agree to evacuate. As soon as the scroll opens, the death fog is released, wiping most of the elves out and placing them on the path of extinction. Ifen manages to escape on his soul wolf and swears to never work for the Divine Order again, eventually joining the Silver Fang. With few souls from which to draw a source from, Tirsindelius is no longer able to assist in holding the tear in the source veil closed. This wearing of the seal allows the Voidwoken the remnants of the eternal race to return to the mortal plane. This, from what I'm gathering, is something that Lucian didn't anticipate. He didn't realize that it would weaken Tirsen Delius. I don't think he understood that much about how the source worked and what the gods were doing. So now we go to 1238. From what I gather, these events are kind of happening simultaneously. There's I'd say between 1233 and 1242, some of these are overlapping. They're not specifically, well, at 1242, there's a certain amount of time that's happening while these events take place. It's not like, I mean, I know there's teleportation and stuff, but between Lucian saying we're going to use Death Fog and Ben actually showing up to use the Death Fog, there's some time, there's something, some leeway of time happening. Because in 1238, this is where Beyond Divinity plays out. Damien, under the guise of a Death Knight, is soul forged to one of Lucian's paladins who fell through a rift into Nemesis. Now this is important because I don't think it's really clear how soul forging works. And I'm gonna talk about that more into probably Damien's video. I don't think the paladin has a specific name. I've only heard maybe one name mentioned. So the, the soul forge was done by the Archdemon Samuel. It wasn't done by the Death Knight. Together they work to make their escape from Nemesis. Years later, Damien takes advantage of his freedom, initially overturning the Rivalonian forces. Now, I mention this because I don't know how long it takes Damien to actually escape Nemesis. Nemesis being the plane, not like... These events, I believe, are still happening while we are playing Divinity Original Sin 2. I think Beyond Divinity is happening while we are trying to get to arcs. And there's a good reason for that. So in 1242, Divinity Original Sin 2 starts. In order to prevent a further divine from coming to Rivalon and as such as causing wider damage to the veil, Lucian fakes his own death and resides in his tomb under arcs. His bidding carried out by Vreedman as the assumed Brachus Rex and Dallas, who is in fact daughter of eternal fame. So the thing is, we always say, well, Dallas this, Dallas that. Dallas died probably before 1233. The real Dallas died before Lucian realized how the seven 
we're holding the void. So Dallas has been dead for quite a while, is my guess. Lucian's biological son, Alexander, assumes the leadership of the Divine Order, rounding up sorcerers and shipping them to Fort Joy. Under the pretense of protecting the people from Voidwoken attacks, he is instead draining them of their source. The gods select new chosen ones, so new marked ones, known as Godwoken, in an attempt to instate the new Divine One. The Godwoken arrives at the Eternal Academy to undertake the ritual, to be fooled at the last moment by Dallas and Vreedman, who drain the source well using the Aetheran. Disappointed by the Godwoken's failures to ascend, the gods return to the mortal plane in spirit form and are defeated by the Godwoken. The Godwoken discovers Lucian below arcs and the true identity of Reedman and Dallas hearing Lucian's plight and plan. The Godwoken sides with the divine and purge source of the world. That is apparently the canon ending of Divinity Resident 2. The problem is because Divinity 2 happens after Resident 2, I don't think they had a choice. Lucian, whatever the choice ends up being. Now, this could change in Fallen Heroes, but I'm not sure when we're going to get Fallen Heroes, if we're going to get Fallen Heroes. So it's not going to be until we get another Divinity game to confirm this, because they can rewrite whatever they want up until the release of the game. They can change it the day before the release of the game. We could be playing an early access version of the game for two years, and they can change their mind and write it and change it whenever. So until we get another game that follows after Divinity Sin 2, this is right now the canon ending. The thing is, I don't think it's made apparent the reason why Lucian is staying in his tomb and let's say hiding or planning um, is because he has a Tenebrium Vault. I don't think it's explained in the game properly or at least not like outright explained. So the Tenebrium is blocking the gods ability to detect Lucian. So they in fact think that he is dead. So that's why they're they're trying to send for another God Woken. They don't know he's still alive. They don't know he can still fight them. And that he is in fact stronger than they are put together. Or at least as strong as they are put together. And it's not really well shown in the game because you can kill it pretty easily. That brings us to 1244. We don't know much about it, but that is gonna be Fallen Heroes. It takes place two years after the events of Original Sin 2. Malady betrays the Divine Order. Ifen and Losa are tasked with hunting down and capturing their former allies, a task which they complete successfully. That's what it says here. So that means we're going to go and kill Beast and the Red Prince. I don't know. That sounds kind of weird to me, but we will see. Which is weird because you side with them. And I'm pretty sure Ifen's ending sides with the Divine. We don't know who actually wins. Who Maybe somebody dies because it says former allies. But that's all we have into the fallen heroes. We'll skip ahead uh, for now. So now let's talk about 1244 on. We're approaching Divinity 2. So there's a lot that happens in between. So Lucian is seemingly killed by a dragon knight in an act of betrayal. The divine order as a result turns against both demons and dragons in the ensuing chaos until Xandalore reorganizes the troops. Damien withdraws from the battlefield, his revenge attained. The thing is, it wasn't a dragon knight. It was Damien as an illusion or disguised as, somehow made it look like he was a dragon knight and he attacked Lucian. He didn't kill him, but he's taken prisoner into lanes of Hypnora Tomakia, where he's kept for quite a while inside a crystal. This is the same place that the Dragon Knight will end up, but that's like 50 years from then. That's what ends up happening. Damien gets his revenge and he seals Lucian. Between 1250 and 1300, the Order of the Dragon Slayers is formed by Knights of the Realm for the sole purpose of hunting down Dragon Knights to extinction. The early structure itself was that of chapters, then a single unified group. Now, I'm pretty sure Slain in Divinity Resident 2 is a Dragon Knight as he transforms when you let him go. I'm guessing in the canon of Divinity Original Sin 2, Slain survives. No matter how much I like his sword, he survives. I don't know what his odds are between players. I'm pretty sure most players kill him after their first playthrough. I'm not sure how exactly Dragon Knights are created. You're either chosen or taught the skill. I don't think you're born into it. You could be born into it, but we'll see in the timeline here. There's an entire order 
just to kill dragons. And they have silver eyes, something I think to do with them being able to be distinguished and seeing better for facing dragon knights. In 1290, Booth was caught having an affair with Dana Jackson, her husband Carl. I don't know why this is important in the timeline, but it's a quest that you have early in the game. The Dana is a serial adulterer currently having an affair with Dirk. She's also involved with a man called Booth in 1290 and murdered her extramarital partner. So her husband, Carl, murdered her lover. Dana is one of the few who managed to escape to Alaroth. Okay, so she escapes when Broken Valley is destroyed by what it seems like death fog, let's just say, uh, in Divinity 2. I don't think they knew it was going to be death fog per se, but it's definitely poisonous fog, um, and they destroyed the whole valley. Camilla not escaped at all. Herself, Dirk, and Folo were murdered at Madam's Eve by the zombie Jake. So Jake is a zombie that you get to see in three games at least in the Divinity series. I don't think we see him in the original Sin 2. I don't think so. I don't think we're in the right area of the world. That explains uh, nothing. Other than somehow some other people may have escaped that death fog. So 1300 is when Divinity 2 takes place. The elves are assumed extinct in the book. However, the truth is they immigrated from their main homeland and went into hiding to avoid such conflicts. The last dragon knight, Talana, is located in Broken Valley and mortally wounded by the veteran slayer, Road. Talana manages to escape through the ruin between Upper and Lower Broken Valley and she captures a freshly initiated dragon slayer, which is the player, the hero, trusting her power into the slayer she converts them in the Slayer into a Dragon Knight. So it seems like that's, it's just as easy as that to just, you know, just, you can give your power away to somebody else, it would seem. Revealing to them the truth that the betrayal was not unified act of the Knights and the danger which Damien still presented. So it, it gives you proof that Damien was the one that 50 years ago attacked Lucian. Later, when the Dragon Knight captures the Battle Tower and kills Lakin with Razakel, Damien unleashes his flying fortresses upon Rivalon, eradicating all life in Broken Valley as retaliation for the Dragon Knight's pursuit of him. So that's what I mean by it seemed like it was Death Fog. If you play the game, you'll see you won't die as the Dragon form, but you'll take damage, like poison damage. During this time, the last Dragon Knight saves Alaroth from the Undead and Demon Onslaught and enters the Hall of Echoes to resurrect Ygurna under the assumption that her resurrection would kill Damien. In Divinity 2, at some point, Ygurna gets word to you that if you want to kill Damien, you have to break the Soul Forge between them. And because when he did his Soul Forge onto Ygurna back in... In 1233 timeline, so 70 years ago, when Ygurna was killed, um, he did a soul forge. Damien did a soul, soul forge onto Ygurna. Now, it's not really clear how soul forging works. The idea was, or the lie, because essentially they're lying to you by saying she just wants to get resurrected. And I'm guessing Damien can't do it for whatever reason. I don't think that's explained in the game. But they tricked the Dragon Knight into resurrecting her so that Damien would die. If one of them is alive, the other one dies. But that's not true. They're just lying to you and trying to tell you there's a weakness to Damien and that it's Ygurna. But that is, that, that's just not true. I think what ends up happening, because of how Divinity 2 works out, you end up killing Ygurna at the end, I believe. At least that's what I did. Not sure if that's canon. I think he never actually got soul forged. I just don't think he got soul forged to her soul. There's some talk about soul forging with inanimate objects and that Maxos was able to do it, but it was a modified soul forge spell. More on that in a different video, but just know that there's a good chance that this soul forge never actually worked. And I have some details about that that I don't know might lead me to believe that's what happened. But we're not in the opinion piece yet. So when you resurrect her, instead, she imprisons you in the plane of Hypnerotomachia, which is where Lucian is. So that's where you see Lucian in the game, and you're both stuck in the same crystal. So while you're imprisoned, 
Damien and Yigurna unleash the Black Ring Armada upon Ravas Fjord and destroy the Champion Harbor. Since there's no one to to fight them, they just they just wreak havoc with their flying fortresses in the game. When their army reaches Alaroth, Xanalor removes the shield from Berlin's prison, he used his partial freedom to bring the Dragon Knight back to Rivalon. Well, that's kind of weird. So he grabbed a shield to protect Alaroth from the invasion. Berlin promised that him and the knight, which is you, the player, the Dragon Knight, would go on a journey, on a quest to free the Divine, as well as grant him a device known as the Eye of the Patriarch. When you arrive to Alaroth, you have to do a series of quests to try to free Berlin, to actually free him of his curse or his prison. You have to find his source of power, I believe. Because the whole, the whole thing, he was sealed in a vault, but Xandalor needed something strong to protect Alaroth, and he used that shield so that the fortresses wouldn't be able to destroy Alaroth. Between Divine Divinity and Divinity 2, Alaroth has changed quite a bit. So after the knight reached Berlin's prison, Belagar shows up and begs the Dragon Knight not to free the Damned One. In exchange for a device as mighty as the Eye, the only device Sandler believed could eliminate both Damien and his armada, Belagar appears and begs the knight not to free the Damned One. So not to free Berlin, who uses partial freedom to bring the Dragon Knight back to Rivalon. So this is where um, the Eye of the Patriarch that they mentioned, I think I mentioned it. That is also the dragon that you saw in Divine Divinity and then you tricked to gain the spell or the skills to enter the, the temple. Belagar pleads with you basically to not listen to Berlin and not help him escape his prison. And Belagar has a way for you to combat Damien. I don't know what the difference is because when I played the game, uh, the decision I made was to side with Berlin because I said, who cares, right? Uh, so I don't know what would happen if you had sided with Belagar. All I know is the final fight might have been a bit easier, but I think the outcome is the same. So apparently the canon ending is in the end, the knight freed Berlin, who gave the knight the eye but refused to free the divine. Armed with this powerful object, the knight with army of champions of Alaroth the knight successfully managed to obliterate the armada, who turned out to be commanded by Yigurna herself, but she had managed to spirit herself away along with Berlin and pulled a dragon knight with them. They teleported themselves onto the plains of Hypner Rotomachia, and there beneath Lucian's crystal prison, the final battle ensued. The dragon knight came out victorious, and with Yigurna's death, Lucian was freed. I don't know why with Yigurna's death, Lucian would be freed. Uh, I think there's something I'm missing here. Uh, maybe something else happened. Afterwards, both the Dragon Knight and the Divine return to Alaroth. However, Damien is still alive and according to Yigurna's words, working to unlock demonic powers. So, this is the end of the timeline that we have right now. There's a lot we still have to see. Like I said, Fallen Heroes should be the next one. And it should show Damien's return. But that means we can't be killing Damien if Divinity 2 is still in canon. So I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not sure what the next game is going to be. But there could be a lot of details, nods, and such. One thing I kind of find weird is they don't really talk about Xandalore much in Divinity Origins 2. They don't talk about, even though he's been a pretty big character in most of the games. One thing I find, uh, I found online, some people seem to think that Xandalore was supposed to be in Arhu's place in Divinity Original Sin 2. They seem it would have been more fitting, seeing as Arhu is kind of a minor character compared to Xandalore. But he's not mentioned at all. So maybe he's off. Like I said, the world is huge. He could be off in a different area of the world dealing with another threat. That is quite likely. While I was editing, uh, I was going through the edits for the video for the timeline and I realized I was talking about Xandalore and going through it, I realized Xandalore is not in Divinator Sin 2 because he's in Nemesis. He's either chasing, I'm not sure I didn't finish the quests in Divinity, sorry, he's in Beyond Divinity. He's stuck in Nemesis. 
I'm not sure what he's doing there because I didn't finish his quest. I didn't dig deep because I couldn't really get into Beyond Divinity. But that's where Zandalar is at the time uh, in the timeline. And this is why we don't hear or see from him in Original Sin 2. What else? There's a, there's a lot of details that, you know, some people may be like, well, how is it possible that Zandalar is like 10,000 years old and Fane? And, you know, you can kind of disbelieve it when you think Fane, well, he's undead. He's been undead. But not really. I don't think Fane technically counts as undead. He's an Eternal. And I'm not sure that all Eternals are undead, personally. But that's a lot of details that we have to talk about in the coming videos. I think Eternals are Eternals. Because if not, if they're all undead, then it wouldn't make sense that everything is created in their images. It, it gets really, really crazy. But since I've been talking for a few hours now, I'm going to take a bit of a break. Probably going to cut this video here. And in the future ones, I'll have more of my opinion of what's going on. This is just the timeline. Uh, you could probably read it yourself. But there's a lot of mistakes. I'll post it in the Divinity timeline. It's the best detailed one I've found so far. Even all the comments are pretty rough. So apparently I may have gotten um, Anno Rivalanus wrong. Apparently it's Latin and it, it means, or after Rivalon. So there would mean probably after founding of the, the world maybe, or founding of the city, because the, the world would have already been built. So it must've been an area in the map, maybe the empire. Anyway, I'm gonna go through most of these comments and edit this thank you all for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe if i find more information if you have more information and it's uh where i said something wrong just post it in the comments we can at least get that done through this through there um again the the wiki fandom so the divinity fandom.com wiki timeline is what i've been basing this on and other texts that i've been reading to try to make this make sense Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you in the next one, which we'll talk about. My biggest question right now in my head is, what is the original sin? Because we have original sin 1, original sin 2, and they don't have that much in common, it would seem. So what do they mean by original sin? And I have my thoughts on that. Cheers. Catch you all in the next one. Peace, everyone.